In this tutorial, we'll build a location service for Flutter. If you're new to the Foldstack channel, please subscribe and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Hey guys, this is Dane from Foldstacks and today we will cover the common task of wrapping functionality inside of a service class. We'll be building a location service that provides us with the stream of the current location as we change our location. To keep the tutorial on point, we will simply display the results of that stream using the stream provider and some text widgets. You can start off with an empty Flutter app. All I did was clean up the main file. And then we can go ahead and add provider. We can also add location. We'll use version 2.3.5. We'll finish with the setup and then we'll go on to the implementation. To set up the Android project, with the permissions, you have to go to the Android manifest and you have to clear that we'll be using the find location. We'll do that by adding a user's permission tag above the application and it will be access find location. Then to take care of some Android X compatibility, we will go to the gradle.properties file and we will add the enable jetifier to true and we will also set use Android X to true. Then you can go over to the build Gradle file on the Android level and for the dependencies for Gradle we will change the version to 3.3.0 and we will also add another dependency which will be the Google services and we'll use version 4.2.0. Next up we'll set up the iOS project to allow for location functionality. Go to the info plist file Go to the bottom of the info plist file and we'll add a new key NS location when in use usage description. And then we'll add a string that says this app requires access for your location for the full stacks tutorial. We'll also add another key, the NS location always usage description, and we'll add the same string for the key. These are the messages that will be shown in the dialog when your code requests the permission to use the the location functionality on iOS. Then we can start with the service. We'll create a new folder under lib called services and inside of that folder we'll create a new file called location service. And inside that file we'll create a class called location service. Then we can go ahead and import the location package. The service will keep track of a current location and for that we will use our own representation of the location using a model called user location. We'll add a type of user location called current location to the top of the location service. Then under the lib folder, create a new folder called data models where we'll create our user location model. We'll create a new file called user location. Then we'll define our class called user location. This model will have two values, a final double latitude and a final double longitude. We'll pass this in through the constructor and that's it for the model. Now back in the location service, make sure that we import the user location. Then we want to create an instance of the location package location class at the top. We'll call that location and we'll define our first function, which is get location, which we'll use to get a single instance of the location when required. This will be a future that returns type user location. It will be a sync. We'll start off with a try catch to make sure that requesting the location, if it fails, does not break the application. Then we'll create a new variable called user location. Then we'll call the get location function and we'll await on that value. And when this value has been retrieved, we will now set our current location equal to a new instance of our user location. And for the latitude, we'll pass in the latitude of our user location variable. And for the longitude, we'll do the same. Then we can take care of printing out the error. We'll just print out could not get the location. And at the end of it, we'll print out the error message itself. And lastly, we want to make sure that we return the current location. This covers the functionality to simply request the current location when required. But for the service, we want to create something that continuously updates us with the user's location. For that, we'll have to use a stream. We'll start off by creating a stream controller of type user location. We'll call that location controller. Since these are once-off events that we want to handle separately to the previous ones, 
we can use the broadcast controller to make that clearer. If you don't know why we're doing this with the controller, please look at the previous video and then you'll see the reason behind using the broadcast stream. Then we want to expose the stream that we'll use through provider. We'll create a property stream of type user location. We'll call it location stream and it will return the stream from the location controller. I'm not a big fan of using variables in the class field definitions. So I'm going to change the variable to the type of location. And then to get these continuous updates, we'll have to subscribe to the stream of location changes from the location object. We'll create a new constructor for the location service and we'll start off by requesting the permission. Once that future returns, it will tell us if permission is granted or not. We'll check if it is granted. And if we have permission to read the user's location, we want to subscribe to a stream that the location library provides us called on location changed. So we'll call the listen function and this will return to us a location object. We'll check if there's anything in this location data. And if the value is not null, we want to add this location data onto our location controller. We'll construct a new user location. We'll pass the latitude data from the location data and we'll do the same for the longitude. This now provides us with a continuous stream of user location data updates that we can use. The reason why we are using our own location model for the location service is to abstract ourselves from the implementation of the location package itself. What this means to our outside code is that if we swap out the location package, we won't re be reliant on their location model. We'll still be using our location model for the user location and we can change the way we get the values out from their models at any time. Next up, I'll just cover how to make use of the stream within your UI. We'll wrap our material app with a widget called stream provider. It will be of type user location. The stream provider uses a boulder to construct or fetch its stream. We will construct a new instance of the location service and we'll return the location stream. Now, if you follow my tutorials, you know that I strongly advise against making use of a location service directly in the UI, but that is specifically for causing side effects or changing state from with the UI. Then we'll create a new view. So under the lib folder, create a new folder called views and inside we'll create a file called home view. We'll construct a stateless widget and for the body of this widget, we'll return center and the, the child of that center will be text and we'll print out the location in that text. Now to get the value of the location that we created earlier, all you have to do is use the provider of call and we'll give it a type user location. Then we can go ahead and print out the latitude. We'll use the value from the user location and we'll do the same for the longitude. Now the way the stream provider works is that if the values change at any time, that widget will get rebuilt and we'll get the new value of the user location, which will then update in real time. And when you run this code now, the first thing that should happen should be the location permission being requested, which happens. If we allow that, we'll see that as soon as we get the values, the UI then updates. The text looks like this because it's not wrapped within a scaffold. So there's no theme for the center and the text widgets that we're showing on screen. The UI is not important in this tutorial, but I can quickly show you how to fix that. All you do is wrap your center in a scaffold. If you don't want to use a scaffold, you can just wrap your center within a theme itself. That'll get your UI back to looking the way it always does. This is a very common technique that I use in my code bases to abstract my functionality of certain packages from the rest of my code base. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week.